So now in CT, uh, the way it works is you have an X-ray source, and then um, uh, the X-ray photons come from the source, and they, um, uh, uh, well, we'll talk about this in a minute, but basically the assumption is that the X-rays uh, travel along a straight line, and as they're traveling, uh, with each increment of distance, there's a certain probability that they're either absorbed, you might absorbed, whatever that means, or that they continue on. So you can't create photons. Uh, they're only created through the light source. So as it's passing through the tissue, they can only be absorbed. And when they're, they're either absorbed or they continue on uh, is, the, is the assumption. So they travel in a straight line or they stop, okay? So it's like, uh, it's as if you were like, oh, I don't know, you were shooting a BBs out of a BB gun and the BBs uh, were going through some kind of material and there would have some probability of stopping it in any position. You know, some of them got further than others like that, right? But you can't suddenly create a BB, okay? Now, what ends up happening, though, is this approximation is not exact because there's what's, in fact, the way a photon is absorbed is it's actually scattered. And when it's scattered, its energy shifts. Okay. And, and, uh, but when a scatter event occurs, what really happens is the photon goes in a different direction. But usually, the hope is that when that scatter event occurs, the energy shift of the photon is large enough that the detector is no longer sensitive to it. So basically, you just don't detect the scattered photons. Uh, in, uh, but you know, the scattered photons could turn into light, visible light, because the energy could be reduced that much. Or eventually, they turn into heat in the, the absorbed in the, in the material. Uh, okay, but but the way we think about it is that this is, doesn't really happen. There's no scatter. Okay, it just goes through a straight line and either stops or goes. Okay, now. Uh, that brings to uh, what's called, uh, um, oh, I forget the name of this. There's, this is kind of the law. This is a name, and I'm forgetting it. Beer's Law. I guess it's called Beer's Law. So um, uh, uh, so what happens is that um, this shows the attenuation of a photon. So what we need to do is mathematically, we need these projections. And I haven't told you how we're going to get them yet. We need to measure them. Uh, uh, with a physical instrument, okay? So how are we going to do that? Well, what's, what you can think of this uh, is that you have an X-ray source coming through and you, you have a pinhole columnate, collimator. A collimator is something which basically uh, you might think of it as sort of focusing the beam of X-rays but with a pinhole rather than a lens, okay? Uh, you can do that reasonably effectively with X-rays because the wavelength is so short that you can get pretty high. If you tried to use a pinhole camera for optical wavelengths, it would be not very effective because you get so many diffraction effects. But the, but the wavelength of X-rays is so short that you can use a pinhole to, to focus them reasonably accurately in terms of physical distances, okay? So with a, with a pinhole here, the X-ray sources can be thought of as traveling along a line. And then uh, the question is, well, what's the, uh, the uh, number of photons per unit time or the, the number of photons as a function of position along the line, the material where and we assume that the material has some density mu of x. So you can basically write a differential equation down, okay? Uh, okay, so first of all, the, pos the, the uh, distribution, the probability distribution of the photons is Poisson. So if you count photons over a fixed period of time, the probability density, uh, the, uh, the probability mass function for that, dis that uh, number of photons is Poisson, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and this is the Poisson distribution, and the mean of the Poisson distribution is lambda sub x, okay? Or lambda is the mean at position x. So y is the number of photons at depth x. So the expected value of y is lambda. Okay, um, x is the deck the distance. So you can write a differential equation down. So basically what you do is you say this. Okay, if you look at an increment, so you, you have these photons and they're traveling through here, and you, and you look at an increment of distance. So this increment of distance is dx, okay? So the um, number of, so, uh, and the photons going, the average number of photons entering into here is lambda x, okay? So what's the average number of photons that come out? So, well, how many are absorbed? So if you take lambda x, that's the expected number of photons that go in, 
all right? You multiply it by mu at the position x, which is the absorption, and you multiply that by the distance dx, okay? That should be equal to uh, minus uh, delta lambda, delta lambda. Because, okay, the, lambda is a positive quantity, mu is a positive quantity, delta x is a positive quantity, but the number of pixel, the number of photons, is, it's a change in the number of photons is negative, right? Some of them go away, they're absorbed. So this will become, uh, uh, this will become delta, delta lambda, right? So uh, basically you can write a differential equation, you get that d lambda x dx, is equal to minus lambda x mu of x. Okay. So uh, so you can integrate that differential equation, and the integral of that differential equation that you can solve it is lambda at, lambda of x is equal to lambda of zero times e to the minus the integral from zero to x of mu of t dt. So now, if I take this, so uh, so how did I know this is true? Well, I knew it because, um, well, I've been teaching the course for a long time, right? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, but, so, okay, but given that I just knew it, okay, how do I check that it's correct? I can differentiate this, plug it into that differential equation, and it solves it. Now we know, if you've taken a course on differential equations, the solution to a differential equation like this must be unique. Okay, given a boundary condition, and the boundary condition here is this, lambda of zero is lambda zero. So this is the unique solution to that differential equation given this boundary condition. So what does this equation look like? What is it telling you? It's saying that uh, the lambda that comes out is the lambda that goes in times e to the minus this. So this is the attenuation factor, okay? And uh, it's the, the absorption of the material, the density of the material is always positive. So this integral is always positive. So you're always going to make the number of photons that come out smaller than the number that go in. Okay, so what I can do now is just uh, go a little further with this. I can say, oh, well, um, I get that uh, if I can't, lambda of x over lambda of zero, so the ratio of the number of photons out to the number of photons in, right, is, is uh, equal to e to the minus the integral of zero to x of mu of t dt, right? Mm -hmm. And if I take the log of that, well, I get that the log of uh, lambda of x over lambda zero, if I take, I get the negative of the log, okay, is equal to the integral from zero to x of mu of t, oops, mu of t dt. By the way, what's t? Well, t is nothing, it's just a dummy variable. I can pick any letter I want here. I could make this any letter, right? And my per personal favorite ha letter to put in there, actually, whenever I put letters in, if some of you may know this, I have a personal favorite letter that I always put in for any letter that can be anything at all. And it's usually the happy face letter, okay? But you may have another choice, okay? You can, I've also experimented with using small homes, okay? okay? Or, you know, whatever. You could have a little dinosaur. You know, go to town, enjoy yourself. Put anything you want in there because it doesn't matter. That variable can be anything, right? It doesn't matter, okay? It has no physical meaning in this problem. It's just the integrand, okay? okay. So, anyway. This thing here, this is the log, this log ratio. Now, the lambda x out is always going to be smaller than lambda zero because you only absorb photons. So when I take the log, it's negative. So when I take the negative, that's going to make a positive. So this will be a positive quantity, right? And, and this integral, so this positive quantity here is going to be that integral there. So this is the, what we needed because this is the measurement. This is measured. You measure that, and this over here is what we need to know. That's the line integral we needed to know, okay? Uh, so we could do the tomographic reconstruction. Because remember, we needed the line integrals. Uh, let me just get the picture. There's the line integrals. We needed these line integrals through here. So that's what we're going to do. So the physical system 
uh, let's just kind of review what this is going to look like. Uh, so the physical system is going to be this. We're going to have a source of x-rays. The x-rays will go over here, okay? Um, and then here we have a detector, okay? So the detector will count the number of x-rays, okay? So this will be lambda, I don't know, one, okay? And we'll have an object here, okay? And now uh, what you really do is uh, you, do a, uh, you do what's called an air calibration. In other words, you remove the object and you measure the lambda with no, uh, with no object in there and you get lambda zero. So that's the calibration, right? And whenever you have a physical system making a measurement, you always have to calibrate it. So if you have a camera, you have to take a picture with the lens cap on, you know, that's your dark current, right? Here, in this case, for a CT system, you take everything out of the CT system, you make a measurement with nothing in there, that's air. Okay, so this is the lambda you get when there's nothing in the system. And then what you do is you make the, the measurement lambda when there's something in the system. They, they do this in the morning before you get there. So in the morning when, the, the, when the, you know, the technician arrives to work, the first thing they do is they calibrate the system in the morning before they start up, if they're doing the right thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then what they do is they take, okay, they take the log of um, you can, lambda zero over lambda one. This is a positive number, right? And the log, okay, so that's gonna be positive. And that's your projection. Okay, everybody clear on that? So that's the physical measurement that you make. Now once you have the physical measurement, now we still have the problem that we have to actually invert it, okay? Uh, 